E bwana kimenuka tena huku rais aliyechaguliwa lakini hakutangazwa yani mheshimiwa Raila Odinga e bwana amezungumza kwa mara ya kwanza amezungumza na wananchi wa Kenya kwenye interview e bwana amezungumza na mwandishi wa habari na amemzungumzia hasimu wake ambaye ndiye rais aliyetangazwa rais mteule mheshimiwa William Ruto e bwana mheshimiwa Raila Odinga anaongea kwa uchungu Japo anaongea kwa kimombo ni imani yangu utaelewa yale anayozungumzia lakini anaongea kwa hisia na uchungu iliyo tamaradi. E bwana huzuni lazima kujia machoni ukimwona nguli huyu wa siasa ambaye amepigania watu wa Kenya tangia akiwa kijana mdogo ameweza kunyoosha mazingira ya haki pamoja na masuala mengine kama ya mahakama na demokrasia kuimarika sana nchini Kenya. E bwana tumsikilize nguli huyu wa siasa bingwa huyu wa siasa za upinzani akizungumza. E bwana ni lazima utokwe na machozi. Ni heka heka. Um, when when did you start first interacting with uh, Ruto? Was that in your days in Parliament, the first time? Yes, uh, um, uh, I think when uh, William was elected uh, as a member of Parliament for uh, Eldoret North, uh, he came to Parliament. That was the first time that we met uh, physically. Um, uh, yeah, that is 1978. Be exact. Now, this was a man you trusted, trusted enough to even allow him to be a member of the Pentagon, a chief agent of, uh, you know, during the elections, and you know, even in the negotiating team in the in the difficult j days of 2008. What happened? Yeah, well, in, in, you know, um, we, we uh, uh, had. Of course, worked together first in in New Kano when I was the Secretary General. Uh, and he was uh, the organizing secretary, so we we knew each other uh, from that time. Then, of course, we left Kano and we formed the Rainbow Coalition. Ultimately, the LDP Rainbow, and then we eventually teamed up with the National uh, Party of Kenya to form the National Rainbow Coalition. But then, um, as you know, we went for elections, and after the elections, um, uh, they were in the opposition. Khan was in the opposition, and uh, Nak was in government. And then there was disagreement over the the constitution. We uh, remember there was had been an MOU which had been signed uh, when we were forming Nak, and that was not honoured. And the issue of the constitutional review became contentious. Uh, then there was disagreement at Bomas, as you know. Ultimately, um, we were going to face uh, a, a, a referendum, and there was a division. And that's how we, we reached out to to Khan, which was in the opposition. You know, um, they were there in, in the opposition, but they were very uncomfortable because they are not used to being in the opposition. So when I approached them and said, look, if we, we team up together, we can actually be able to defeat this constitution, which because it is not the draft which Kenyans had negotiated at, uh, at Bomas. So that was our engagement. And when we engaged, then uh, um, we uh, managed to defeat uh, the, that uh, draft. The so, but, but what exactly, what led you to fall out with, uh, with uh, William Ruto? It's really um, falling out. Uh, I don't know that you can call it really a falling out. Well, what happened was um, uh, I appointed William Ruto as minister for uh, agriculture, because you know, we were together and um, he was part of the negotiating team uh, on, our, on, on our side as um, uh, ODM, uh, the, together with James Orengo, Sally Kosge, um, Salim Davadi, and um, that is our, our team that was negotiating. So, 
When we were negotiating uh, a joint cabinet, because uh, ODM was getting 50% and uh, uh, PNU 50%, uh, I had my list of, of, uh, of ministers. and The other side was not very comfortable with the, with the name William Ruto. They told me that uh, they didn't want him uh, in the cabinet. So you dropped him? But I, no, I told him that you will not choose for me whom I'm appointing as a minister. Uh, and, and appointed him as a minister. In fact, the biggest docket that I had through those negotiations of portfolio sharing was a minister of agriculture. And I appointed him as a minister of agriculture. Okay, so, and um, he worked hard as a minister of agriculture. But then there came this the problem, as you know, the, the maize crisis. And um, when investigations were done by Price Waterhouse Coopers, they came up with a um, result which showed that uh, uh, there had been some irregularities, very glaring irregularities, and, and the minister uh, bore some responsibilities. And therefore took the act of uh, suspending the minister uh, so that investigation could be carried out. And um, my partner at that time, of course, um, uh, things had changed because ICC was also there. And uh, so the, uh, Mr. my partner, Mr. Kibaki, um, uh, said I had not consulted him. But I was not sucking him. You did but not suck him? I was just su suspended him to allow investigation to be conducted professionally okay because uh, it would be said that the, the ncpb had been instructed by the minister to give the maize to uh, members of parliament to sell to the millers the millers were complaining that they were buying maize at an exorbitant price and that's why the price of unga had actually gone up so Today, where, where are things? Do you, do you talk with uh, DP William Ruto? Yeah, we greet each other. Um, our um, relationship are uh, basically uh, cordial. We have no, no, no serious issues for, um, uh, uh, with him. I mean... You, you uh, say you don't have serious issues. When we spoke to him on Thursday, he kept bringing up uh, your name, even asking us, you know, were those questions sent by, by Rayla or uh, Odinga? So would you say you are friends with William Ruto at the moment? I would say that I, I, I don't hate him as a person. Do you like him? Okay, the, the issues are that uh, certain things that he's done or he does that um, are basically contrary to what I think would be the, the correct ways of doing things. What, what do you mean by things he does? Uh, you, you see, for example, he is um, uh, the, the deputy president. And he knows very well that uh, in this country, we had conducted an investigation. We, uh, Parliament had a select committee led by Koigi Wamwere that carried out investigations about Harambe. And came up with that, that Harambe was actually a source of corruption and that therefore we should uh, actually ban Harambe's. And, and Harambe's were banned. That's why under my administration with Kibaki, there were no Harambe's. Then he decided to resurrect Harambe's and he's running around uh, every weekend donating money whose sources are dubious. In my view, this is uh, corrupting uh, uh, the, the political process. So you don't think he's out to help these communities that uh, he give donations to? No, I, 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 helping is a different issue. The issue is that what is the source of the money that he's donating? You see? Because, you know, as, as somebody who is a public servant, you are not supposed to be in business. When I became Prime Minister, Kibaki demanded of me that I must resign from all the business positions that I held, okay? Now you'd ask yourself, 
What kind of business does William Ruto own which makes those millions which he produces every week, 52 weeks in a, in a year? He doesn't. He contributes not less than five million shillings but every the, weekend. The, the president himself sends donations to some of these events. So is the president also doing something wrong? I know for a fact that the president does not produce a penny. Ruto produces the money and says he has been sent by the president. But I know that that is not true. The president feels very embarrassed. So the other day. So these Harambees are not genuine, uh, Mr. Odinga. What do you think is the purpose of these donations? Of course, corrupting political process to show that this man is a God-fearing man. He loves the, the church, he loves the people. Uh, and that's why he's coming uh, with money to donate. You see, if you do a lifestyle audit of Mr. William Ruto, because you'll find that uh, most of the, that money's source is, is, is questionable. Uh, and and that, that is what the only issue, uh, what, uh, the issue I have with him. Otherwise, I have no serious personal issues. Can you see a day when he might possibly become the president of this country? Yeah, I mean, um, why not? If the people of Kenya elect him as president, who will buy <laughs> to, to say no? Would you work with him? Uh, that's another question. Another question altogether. Uh, you know that my values um, are, are very clear. And uh, so before I get into any kind of relationship uh, of passion. Because of those things and you say your values differ from his, um, people feel that your current position or relation with uh, President Huru Kenyatta is essentially sidelining the Deputy President William Ruto. I really, Uhuru Kenyatta is the President, William Ruto is the Deputy President. Uhuru Kenyatta is the leader of Jubilee Ruto is his deputy. So I'm not interfering. I'm not in government. I'm not in Jubilee. I'm completely out here. So, But you, you're, uh, you're quite influential in the Jubilee government because of your relationship with the President uh, Uhuru Kenyatta. I don't know about influence. Because as you know, I don't make decisions. The President is very competent in making decisions. So I don't get involved. I don't discuss issues of the government with the president. I don't discuss issues of Jubilee with the president. You see, um, and like when I was with Kibaki, we were in government. We were in a government together. And we were consulting regularly on government issues. Because I was the one who was coordinating and supervising.